In China, a young woman is having open heart surgery. But it's unlike anything you'll see in the West. She's still conscious. Because instead of a general anesthetic, this 21st century surgical team are using a 2,000 year old method of controlling pain. Acupuncture. Millions of us now believe that this simple needle has extraordinary powers. Today, more and more of us are putting our faith into alternative medicine. Zeng, which is the, the, the main herb. From ancient herbal remedies. It's all way beyond what we normally think of as medicine. To miracle faith healing. Said again, healed all! <laughs> and acupuncture. Ow. Oh, moving hurts, doesn't it? But do these therapies really work? Do they offer something more than conventional medicine? And can science help us find out? In this series, I'll be putting all three to the test. I'll find out whether these needles really do have healing powers. And in a groundbreaking experiment, I'll discover something truly astonishing about acupuncture. the UK, acupuncture is booming. This ancient Chinese treatment is now one of the most popular of all alternative therapies. It's even taking hold within the NHS. Now, nearly a million of us use it every year, and it's growing fast. There are clinics all over the place. Now, here in Chinatown, that's not so surprising. But it's happening all over the country. Now, I'm a scientist, and with all that I understand about medicine, it just makes no sense that sticking a needle into a human body could cure illnesses. And yet, millions of people are convinced that acupuncture works where conventional medicines fail. 19-year-old Joanna Hughes believes acupuncture has transformed her life. For nearly a year, she suffered from ME, a condition that left her bedridden. We will do something to help you. A lot of people are very frightened of needles. Yeah, I'm not too bad. Yeah? Conventional medicine had done nothing, so finally she tried acupuncture. Yeah? It's nowhere near as painful as sort of an injection. It's not like that. It's a lot less painful than that. <laughs> it's kind of like a little electric shock on points which are really strong, like my liver point on my feet is really strong, you kind of feel electric <laughs> shocks going like up your legs. It's reacting, yes, yeah. I can see. After just a few treatments, the effect was remarkable. I just felt like kind of me again, I felt like I had so much more energy, I could just start to do some things which was just like so amazing compared to what I had been like um, a few months ago. And it's not just Joanna. Now, more and more people are convinced that acupuncture has worked wonders. My life was changed. It felt like I had new knees again, because it was just, it was wonderful. I have to scream before if I move my shoulder too much. As soon as I come out of a session, you can immediately feel that the pain has gone away. It did work for me, and it was kind of a miracle, if you like. But it's all based on a very different view of the body. Acupuncturists believe that illness is caused by an imbalance in a life energy, qi, which determines our health. The qi, the energy, flows through the whole body. So acupuncture really is manipulation or unblocking of leaving the energy. 
So what does Professor May make of my life energy? What can you tell me about what's going on in my body by looking at my tongue? Well, from your tongue, the, the coating and the colour, mm -hmm. I know um, what's happening to different organs of your body. Maybe show me your tongue. Ah, yes. Well, your tongue is rather, rather red at the tip here, and I think you're suffering from circulation problems. And, uh, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> um, no, uh, I don't think I do. No? But the tip of the tongue represents the heart, mm -hmm. yes? So I will look at the heart meridian, see if you, you have any pain along your heart meridian or any dysfunction in your heart. As a scientist, I found Professor May's explanation of how the body works extraordinary. What I'm really struggling with is that it's just all so alien. It's not just the needles, the language, the ideas, even the diagnosis. And it just bears no relation to science. And yet, so many people are convinced that it's working for them. So I have to find out whether it really is. Shanghai, China's booming metropolis. Looking around, it's hard to believe that this is the home of one of the most ancient traditional medicines in the world. But it's here I hope to find out exactly what acupuncture is and why so many people in the West are convinced by it. I'm pretty skeptical about acupuncture. But we'd be crazy to write off ancient wisdoms. We ought to question them well, but we can't write them off. Especially when it appears to be able to do something astonishing. In the city's most advanced hospital, 21-year-old factory worker Chun Gunlian has a hole in the heart and her health is deteriorating. She's about to have open heart surgery. Even with the best medical equipment, it's a risky operation. Her chest will be cut open and her heart stopped. But Gunlian will go through all of this without a general anaesthetic. Instead, she's chosen acupuncture. Although sedated by drugs and her chest numbed, she'll be conscious throughout the whole procedure. The doctors stimulate the needles using an electrical current. As the surgeon begins, the success of the operation depends not just on his skill, but on the power of acupuncture. Acupuncture is an effective painkiller. It's also less damaging to the body than a general anaesthetic. It seems incredible. But Gullian's doctors have done more than 300 similar operations. What could possibly explain what's going on? In the old city of Shanghai, I'm hoping to find some answers. I've come to meet one of acupuncture's masters, Yo Yurin, an acupuncturist from one of China's great medical dynasties, and someone who can help me understand exactly how acupuncture works. I've been feeling a bit run down, so he begins by feeling my pulse and looking at my tongue. One of his patients, Fred Wei, translates for him. He says the top of your tongue's condition is very good, it's very red. 
Very bad. Yes. Good, and that's, that's good. good. That's good. That's good. Now, how you make it? Say it again. What about Xin Ho? He's, uh, he says basically, you, you, you think too much. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably right. And that's why he says uh, your inner heat is, is actually quite, quite, uh, quite a lot of inner heat. A lot of inner yeah. heat. Because you think, you think of uh, too many problems and things like that. But the most importantly, he says to basically uh, take control of your personal life and, and maintain the balance. <laughs> 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 so don't work so long. Yes. Sleep more. Yes. Relax more. Yes. And think less. <laughs> yes. I've known for a long time that's what I should do. But that's very good. That's that's me. Well, all of that is true about me. But you could say that about just about everyone I know. At Yo Yo Ren's clinic, the patients are put through a series of bizarre procedures. And Fred was happy for me to watch his treatment. Can you ask Yo Yo Ren why he's put these glass bowls on you? Quite that. He says basically this kind of uh, glass bowls can help. Uh, you know, the blood circulates a little faster. Okay, so all of these down here, down your leg? Yes. Are going to help with the blood flow through your legs? Yes. And that's going to help your buttock? Exactly. Okay. Then, it was my turn. You should just relax. Okay, and, uh, and, and what's he going to do? Think of a happy place while he's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's great, that didn't hurt. He slides the needles in. Each specific point is supposed to treat a different part of my body. How do you feel? Okay. It, uh, a couple okay. of them have stung a little bit, but... Uh, that one really helps you to sleep. Ow. Yeah. Fred, how far in is he putting them? I'm um, actually very light. It's not, not too much. Oh. Yeah. Oh, moving Ooh. hurts, doesn't it? Oh. Yeah. See, what? See, don't, don't move. <laughs> Well, it's quite nice to lie down, but I can't say I'm feeling anything special. Twenty minutes later. And how long does it take to work for it? A few times. <laughs> a few times, so I shouldn't yeah. expect any miracles. <laughs> you have to maintain self-balance, that's the most important part. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to sleep more and uh, work less. <laughs> so most of it is down to me? Yes. Okay. I'm feeling, everything's feeling really tingly and I'm feeling slightly spaced. Um, and I guess that's probably from having needles stuck into me. And whether that's a good thing or not, I've no idea. Today, ancient China is rapidly disappearing. Yet remarkably, acupuncture has found a place in the modern world. I'd like to know just how it's adapted to the demands of modern medicine. Here, in this hospital, doctors are using conventional medicine and acupuncture side by side. So patients get to choose which kind of treatment they're going to have. Doctors here claim they use it for sound medical reasons not just to keep a tradition alive. And what was wrong with him? Okay, so for pain, mm -hmm. acupuncture. Yeah. For a problem with an organ, mm -hmm. Western medicine. And if that doesn't work, uh -huh. then ac acupuncture. Yes. Okay. Yes. But sometimes, when you use Western medicine, they have a um, very big side effect. So they will say, um, yeah, you can accept some acupuncture treatment. Okay. Use a little dose of Western medicine and accept acupuncture. Oh, so use a small amount of Western medicine. Yes. And acupuncture treatment to help to increase yes. the effect. Yes, yes. And that reduces the side effects of yes. the Western medicine. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Doctors here claim that acupuncture can treat just about every illness. 
and people come from all over the world to seek a cure. I went to my doctor in Houston. I had a pain in my shoulder. It's been like that for about six months. First he gave me steroids. Uh, didn't really get better. So he said, you're going to China. Why didn't you try acupuncture? And as soon as I come out of a session, you can immediately feel that the pain has gone away. I had a virus attack and half of my face was paralyzed. And someone recommended Dr. Lee to me. So I came here after five treatment and I was fine. I'm here to stop smoking. I have high cholesterol is what I have. And if I continue to smoke, could have either a heart attack or a stroke. So, you know, both health reasons and, you know, my own moral reasons to stop. That one hurt. Mm. Sorry. It's time for the needles to come out. If they're working, she should feel sick when she smokes. Oh, you want me to try? Does he want me to try to smoke? In here, it's okay to light up? Okay. Yeah, I feel a little nauseous. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put this out. This is making me sick. <laughs> okay. Whatever parts of my body that he was working on just made me a little nauseous. This just really, the smell just made it worse. So there is something to Chinese medicine, definitely. The more I hear, the more I'm beginning to realize we can't just dismiss this ancient tradition. For people here, acupuncture has proved itself again and again over thousands of years. I've traveled deep into the country to visit this ancient city, Guangzhou. It dates back to the time of the great Emperor Qin, and it's over 2,000 years old. So it's a great place to find out about the origins of acupuncture. Yo Yuren has invited me to a museum dedicated to acupuncture. The earliest needles look more like instruments of torture. Well, in the past, there was no metal, and so there were no metallic needles. They used bone instead. We call them bianza, or stone, which was sharpened to a point with a grinding stone, so fine that it could be used as a needle to pierce the body. So why did people start to stick needles into other people? Someone would feel discomfort, but they discovered that if you put a needle in some part of the body, there'd be a sensation, and all of a sudden, the pain would disappear people discovered that this point here could relieve pain or that that point there could treat something else. It's these ideas passed down from one generation to the next that have survived intact to the present day. Acupuncture is so deeply rooted in the medicine here, hardly anyone questions whether it works. You know, if everybody in a culture believes that something's going to work, um, then it's much more likely to work, and we, we know that about medicine. If people believe something's going to work, it makes a big difference, it's more likely to have an effect. Gunlian's operation is entering the most dramatic phase. They check she's okay as they prepare to stop her heart to repair the hole.
It seems amazing to me that acupuncture is even considered for such a life-threatening operation. But after two hours of intricate surgery, everything appears to have gone well. Remarkably, just two days after the operation, Gunlian is sitting up in bed, telling her sister the story. Her memories are still vivid. I remember the doctor stuck a needle into my hand and felt my pulse. Then he put another needle in here and here near my vein. Then my whole body started to tremble. When the scalpel started to cut the bone, I could hear it all. But I didn't feel any pain, not a thing. The speed of Gunlian's recovery is impressive. Just a week after the operation, she's ready to check out. And there's one other benefit to the acupuncture. The bill is a third of the cost of an operation with general anaesthetic. And as I come to the end of my trip, I'm struck by the sheer numbers of people who I've met who are convinced that acupuncture's worked for them. The ancient belief in acupuncture and qi is as much at home among the modern skyscrapers as the old temples. This idea of qi is right at the heart of acupuncture. The Chinese see it as a universal energy that flows around the world and inside every one of us. So it's right at the heart of the culture. The Shaolin monks believe that controlling their qi allows them to perform remarkable feats. And every morning, millions perform Tai Chi, a daily ritual they believe keeps the Qi life force in balance around the body. I think in the West, we often see bodies as machines, and when one bit goes wrong, we think we have to fix that one bit. With acupuncture, the Chinese see the body as a whole system, and so instead of just trying to fix the bit that's gone wrong, they try to readjust the balances and a whole body. I've been much more impressed by acupuncture than I was expecting to be. One of the tricky things about this trip is that it feels like I've been speaking a foreign language the whole time. And I don't mean Chinese English, I mean Western medical view and the ideas of qi and meridians. A lot of scientists coming here might say they need more evidence, and I need more evidence, but I've seen enough to make me believe it's really worth trying to explore it more. So, as I head home, I'm eager to find out what science has to say about acupuncture. I saw some amazing things in China and heard some very compelling stories, but nothing really amounted to hard evidence. There could always be other explanations for what I saw. The woman who gave up smoking, for example, seemed determined to give up anyway. So is there any objective scientific research into acupuncture? 
Just one website has 9,000 scientific papers and 661 trials. But sheer numbers of trials don't mean much unless they've been properly conducted. I've come to Exeter. The university here is now a world leader in research into alternative medicine. Professor Edzard Ernst scrutinizes the research for alternative therapies using strict scientific criteria. Well, one thing is absolutely certain. There's no such thing as an alternative science and there will never be such a thing. So um, either you investigate it with the proper tools of science, or you don't investigate it. Causality is nowhere near proven. Professor Ernst and his team assess every trial that's published. Mostly, the research is disappointing. Trials are too small to be ultimately conclusive, because a big trial costs big money, a small trial costs small money. So trials tend to be s small um, and therefore not fully conclusive. The data isn't just poor. What evidence there is suggests that acupuncture isn't actually working for most conditions. It's certainly not the cure-all it's often said to be. Some people claim, for instance, that acupuncture can help with addictions like smoking, or with weight loss, or even with infertility. But when these claims have been put to the test, acupuncture hasn't been shown to work. But intriguingly, there was one trial that stood out above the others. It was bigger and more scientifically rigorous than the rest. And it was testing a condition that affects millions of us here in the UK. Linda T has suffered migraines for 25 years. A couple of times a month, they'd strike, throwing her family life into chaos. My eyesight goes and it goes like all jagged and you get blind spots and then usually within about an hour I'll start to feel sick and get a real pounding headache and it's just like unrelenting, it's just horrendous. Nothing her doctors did seemed to work. But then her mother suggested acupuncture, which had worked well for her bad back. And she couldn't stand up at this time. She was like bent double and she said, Well, yes, do anything. Um, and she did that and it worked. And she was able to stand up, walk around, and leave. And she was kind of fine and she couldn't believe it. Linda's doctor wouldn't prescribe acupuncture. But she did finally get the chance to try it when she was asked to take part in a medical trial. Okay. I also use REN6 over here. REN6 is a point that we commonly use for energy. Medical researcher Andrew Vickers was asked to conduct the most comprehensive trial so far into acupuncture. What we wanted to do was a very large study taking pretty much all comers, anyone with chronic headache disorders, and we wanted to follow them up for a longer period of time, you know, a year or so. And the idea was that the data from this study would be directly relevant to medical practice. And so the first full-scale acupuncture trial in the UK got underway. Together with 400 other volunteers, Linda was randomly allocated to one of two groups. One, the control group, had just the normal treatment. The other group had normal treatment plus acupuncture. Linda was in the acupuncture group. The acupuncture did something for her migraines that no conventional medicine had managed. I didn't have any through the trial, and then I, I, I never had another one afterwards. So it was kind of almost miraculous. What we found at the end of the trial was that patients who were in the acupuncture group had fewer days with headache, and the headaches they had were less severe than the patients in the control group. The results were intriguing. Here at last was a large-scale, randomized trial that showed acupuncture might really work. It was a significant step forward. 
But there's something that's still troubling me. Perhaps it wasn't the acupuncture itself that was making the difference to people like Linda and the other volunteers. It could have been some other part of the treatment. Just being listened to once a week, having that kind of attention, or being able to lie down and relax properly, maybe those things made a difference. And there's another big problem. And then you stimulate yeah, them manually? Yeah. Yes. The placebo effect. If you know you're having a treatment and believe it might help, especially if it's something as elaborate as acupuncture, then that in itself can have a big effect. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, another stimulation is... Uh, Maybe we want to... We want to Placebos can move mountains in clinical medicine in order to create progress in healthcare, we actually w want to find out whether a treatment is more than a placebo. It's a crucial hurdle to overcome. There's only one way to be sure that it's the act of needling itself that benefits the patient. And that's to compare those who've had acupuncture with those who've been tricked into believing they've also had it. Now how on earth can you do that? persuade someone they've had a one-inch needle stuck into them when they haven't. Well, something's been developed that does just that. I've come to see Mike Cummings, a medical doctor, as well as one of the country's most prominent acupuncturists. Well, in order for me to demonstrate those... He's keen to put acupuncture on a real scientific footing and has been checking out techniques for fake acupuncture. So, well, generally this is the experience that you'll have. Mm -hmm. Tap the needle in. Ow. And then gently, gently insert. Okay, I felt the spike, which hurt a bit. And when, it went, when you pushed in and I didn't feel much, I just felt the spike really. Okay, so that's the okay. real thing. So that's the real thing. So now I have to try and convince you somehow that I've done that type of procedure. This looks exactly like the needle I just put in your hand. Yet this one, rather like a stage dagger, actually disappears into the shaft of the needle. So when you insert it, it looks for all the world like it's gone in, but it's actually blunt and it hasn't penetrated your skin at all. OK, we'll try it out. Pop that in there, and then we can tap it in the same way. That's convincing. And then we twiddle and push. It, to be honest, that is more convincing than the actual real acupuncture. That feels more like a needle going in, and looks more like a needle going in. That's probably because the blunt end on the skin is still feeling quite sharp. I would believe I'd had acupuncture. Do you think it's in you? Um, I don't, because you showed me how it worked, but um, I, I would have done. Well, that was pretty convincing. And for me, it represents quite a big step forward. Because if you're able to have a believable sham acupuncture, it means you can put real acupuncture to the test properly and see whether it's the needling itself that's really having an effect. And what's more, I know of a team who've managed to do exactly that. I've come to the United States because a full-scale trial here has, for the first time, tested real acupuncture against sham acupuncture. At the University of Maryland, researchers were determined to discover whether acupuncture was better than a placebo. Leading the team was Dr. Brian Berman. When you're looking for a placebo in an acupuncture trial, you need to persuade somebody they've had a needle stuck into them mm -hmm. when they haven't. How do you do that? What we did was we took a guide tube, but there wasn't an acupuncture needle, and then we would tap it like that. And then we would actually tape over the point We'd have them ready made up. And it would look pretty much the same thing so if you were looking down. Just the same. You said that you do this on naive patients. The people that we did it on had never had acupuncture before. Have, have you had acupuncture? I have. So you would be more able to tell the subtle differences between them. 
So, Maryland became home to the first placebo-controlled trial into acupuncture. As subjects, Dr. Berman used patients suffering from a crippling disease called osteoarthritis. There's no cure, only techniques for easing the suffering. Sylvia Ankers emigrated to America 40 years ago and has been in crippling pain for the last 20. You think you can do a lot, you know, you start to walk and you think I'm going to be fine, I can walk this long road. But then the pain, it's, it's hard to explain, it's almost like having toothache in your knees, it just really hurts. But acupuncturists claim great success for it. For Dr. Berman, it was the ideal condition to test. 570 sufferers were recruited and divided into different groups. They were randomized to one of three groups. They either got true acupuncture, sham acupuncture, or the education control group, which was the standard care from the Arthritis Foundation. Sylvia, although she didn't know it, was assigned to the real acupuncture group. They told us that, you know, we wouldn't know whether we were having the actual acupuncture or a placebo. On my first session, I was a little apprehensive because, you know, you think needles going in, they're going to hurt, but they didn't. Throughout the 26-week trial period, the team checked the effectiveness of the placebo. We think the placebo worked reasonably well. Most of the people in the groups couldn't tell if they were receiving true acupuncture or sham acupuncture. The team were happy that they convinced enough of the sham group by the technique for the trial to be scientifically sound. Over the months, the results were compiled and then analysed, and a clear picture began to emerge. The reaction was pretty incredible. There was a lot of interest because it was a well-done study with a large number of participants that had a credible placebo control and adequate follow-up and adequate acupuncture. So it was applying good science to this ancient technique. The results were to cause a sensation. When you compared the two, there was about a 33% improvement of the real acupuncture group over the sham acupuncture. And do you know whether the acupuncture is having an effect on the osteoarthritis itself? We don't think that the acupuncture is actually having an effect on the osteoarthritis itself. What we think the acupuncture does is it reduces the pain and inflammation. And that has the effect of then less pain, easier to get around, and better physical function. So would you say that this trial proves that acupuncture works, at least for osteoarthritis? I think it, it does show that acupuncture um, works for osteoarthritis of the knees. Um, you know, I can't say because of this trial that acupuncture works for other types of osteoarthritis even. Um, it may well do, but we need to do this sort of definitive studies. We don't have all the answers in Western medicine. So this trial is the first really convincing scientific evidence that acupuncture works. For Sylvia, it meant a new lease of life. I told everybody to use acupuncture. I felt like the spokesperson for them. There was such a difference in the pain level, in the walking, in every aspect of my life was changed. It felt like I had new knees again, because it was just, it was wonderful. When I heard about the Berman trial, first thing I did was send an email to Brian Berman to congratulate him because up to that point you know, we had the largest trial and now he had the largest trial and I think it's very important to get these big trials done. Uh, of course the nice thing about his trial is that it also had a placebo control group and he did show important differences between patients who received true acupuncture and those who received a, a sham technique. The Berman trial shows that acupuncture is effective for one specific indication. The trial is well designed and therefore I personally trust 
um, its results. It, it convinced me that acupuncture works for knee osteoarthritis. So scientists and patients seem to be speaking with one voice, that for osteoarthritis at least, acupuncture works. And other trials suggest it works for other kinds of pain too. So we can safely say, based on the evidence, acupuncture works for some kinds of pain. I'm quite surprised. I found evidence that acupuncture can work. Something I hadn't expected when I started this investigation. But that just raises an even bigger mystery. Because, so far, there's no proof that needling has any measurable biological effect on the body. So, how can it be treating pain? To be really convinced that it's working, I need to understand how it can be having its effect. A friend of mine, Mark Lithgow, might be able to help. As a neuroscientist, he's been trying to understand just what pain is. Pain research is a very new area. Just understanding the areas, how they connect together, is really just emerging. But modern scientific equipment, like the MRI scanner, has provided insights. Fifteen years ago, it was not possible to look inside someone's head. It was treated as a black box. This has revolutionised how we understand neuroscience today. Mm. Now we can actually see how the brain responds to pain. There's completely different areas that are associated with pain. You'd register that pain, and these parts of the brain towards the front would start to light up. And there's another area at the sides, just here, called the insular cortex, which would also light up in order to, for you to register that feeling of pain. So the brain may be the key to acupuncture. That was really important. If acupuncture works on pain, then it ought to affect the areas of the brain that are involved in experiencing pain. And we're going to devise an experiment to try to measure that. Now, it's hugely ambitious, because of course we've got to be scientific and rigorous and plan it really carefully. But if it does work, we could find powerful evidence that acupuncture is having a real effect on the body. I've called in some of the top people in the field to help. So we're going to devise an experiment together that's trying to work out the effect of needling on the brain. I think one of the first key things we have to tackle is what we use as a control. I'm still a bit concerned to actually try and work out what acupuncture actually is. Is it the needle going in or is it actually the turning of the needle? And there seems to be a depth issue here as well. Most acupuncturists would say for this point here on the hand would needle about maybe half a centimetre to, to a centimetre. This is clearly much more complicated than it initially seems, isn't yeah. it? I mean, there are so many different parts we could look at. The position that you put the needle, the depth that you put the needle, the movement of the needle, whether you move it or not. So what you're suggesting is we just focus on the act of needling and take... An it's really interesting for me being in a room with a group of people of different perspectives. So scientists, some of whom are really sceptical about acupuncture, and acupuncturists who are interested in science but really believe in acupuncture. And I think to do a proper experiment in this field, you have to have those different perspectives. You need the scepticism, but you also need people who really understand the whole of the field. So let's just constrain ourselves to one particular point in acupuncture, say in the back of the hand. Mm -hmm. So How that, would, that, would that help us? Well, I think that would, because at least you're looking at the effect of, of, of that point on the brain, 
And one of the interesting comparisons then is to see if you just go, say, superficially, just under the surface of the skin, and see what happens to the brain, and then needle to the depth of maybe about a centimetre, which is probably on average what most acupuncturists would do. Mm -hmm. And we could, we could map that in the brain, we could look at that difference. Well, we've made a good start, and we've agreed on what test we're going to use. We'll stick the needle in on a well-known acupuncture point just here. And for the real acupuncture, we'll stick the needle in quite deep and do a brain scan of the volunteer. As a control, we're going to just stick the needle in a short distance and twist it, and then do the brain scan. And so, by comparing those two, we ought to be able to see the difference between the real acupuncture and the control. This is a genuine piece of new research. We plan to look deep into the brain during acupuncture to find out, one way or another, whether acupuncture is having a measurable effect on the body. Well, that's fantastic. 16, now all we've got to do is set the experiment up. Mark talks to the team about volunteers, questionnaires, scientific protocols, as well as tracking down the most powerful scanner available. The setup was just incredible. The constant phone calls. I mean, within a few minutes of someone putting the phone down, there'd be someone else on the phone saying, are you sure this protocol's right? Are you sure you shouldn't do the control like this? You shouldn't change that? Everyone was so panicky about the control, so worried that they weren't going to get the control. Because once you've started the study, you're completely committed. The whole team are now really fired up. And the stakes are getting pretty high for everyone. The scientists are quite convinced they're not going to see anything unusual happening in the brain during acupuncture. Whereas the acupuncturists are a bit worried that if they don't see anything interesting, well, it kind of undermines their whole profession. Finally, it's the big day. Hugh will lead the study and carry out the acupuncture. Aziz will scrutinise the data and analyse the results. Mark and I will be on hand to check what's going on. And we've pulled off a coup. We've persuaded the University of York to let us use their state-of-the-art scanning equipment. Now, we've come here to York to do these experiments. Why here? Well, this, they've got here the new generation of MRI scanners, what's called the, the three Tesla version, which is a relatively high field strength. Only a few years ago, they were what's called one and a half Tesla, so it's doubled in field strength. So it's a hefty, big <laughs> MRI scanner. Big magnet in there. The MRI takes stills, like photographs of the brain. But we're also going to use a more advanced form of scanning. It's like using, perhaps having a, a video footage where you get a continuous stream of data. So you can actually follow someone's thoughts in real time far closer than you can do, even with the big scanners here. So using these two techniques together, we ought to be able to see deeper into the brain what's going on at a particular time when acupuncture is going on. I think so. No, firstly, no one's combined these two techniques on the same patients. That's, that's a complete first here. This particular design of study is a complete first, trying to rule out certain features. And using this field strength with this magnetic field has not been done before. So there's lots of firsts that are going on in this study. If you don't find it here, you're not going to find it anywhere. <laughs> the massive magnet is powerful enough to pick up a car. So each of the volunteers has to check for anything metal on their bodies. The only thing I was worried about was metallic toenail polish. It's far enough away going from collarbones up, so okay. that's far enough cool. away, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just about to go into the room, but first of all, we need to, to make Hugh sure... Hugh takes the volunteers you through know, the escape drill. Okay. Once inside the MRI, they'll be locked behind a six-inch steel door designed to seal the scanner from the Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Mechan mechanical way of getting out. So if there's a power cut, for example... Right, this and you're unconscious. <laughs> but the thing is, actually, I'm in the room with you, so... But this is part of our regular safety routine. The team are trying to detect the tiniest changes in the brain when the needles are inserted. Even the smallest error at this stage could invalidate the entire experiment. 
we've tried as hard as possible to be absolutely rigorous. So we're doing everything we know to make sure that we're really looking only at the effect of the acupuncture needle. We've randomised everything as much as we can. We've made sure the patients don't know what they're getting. We've even tried to, to not let the practitioner know, the acupuncturist know, what he's going to be doing until the last moment. Ten seconds till we rest. Three, two, one, start. Finally, the experiment begins. A scan is first taken of the brain at rest, the baseline. So you can hear that. So that's taking images now. Now it's having a little bit of a baseline period while they're up sort of to get effectively the mind or the thoughts while they're at rest. Then the team scan the brain when the needles are inserted. Hugh then twists the needle. This usually generates an achy tingling sensation called de chi. When the needle is, is stimulated, you quite often elicit this dirty sensation and acupuncturists often look for that. They look for a dirty sensation as, as part of the healing, healing activity of the, of the acupuncture. Three, two, one, start. Where are we going? now. Part of the excitement for me of this experiment is that it's really bringing together Eastern approaches to acupuncture and a really rigorous Western scientific way of thinking. And it could completely change the way that we see acupuncture. Buried away in his lab at York University, Aziz begins to analyse the data. It'll be weeks before the analysis will be complete and we'll find out what, if anything, our experiment has revealed. At last, results day. Now, the results are looking really interesting. But, Hugh, maybe you could just summarise the main findings for us really clearly. First of all, with superficial needling, you know, we get a picture in the brain of a certain, this area lighting up, in other words, becoming activated, increased blood flow. And if you look at this, this brain here, this is the, the front of the brain here, and this is the back. And we have a cutout there, just so you can see inside better what's happening. That's no surprise. This is just the brain's normal response to the needle being lightly inserted. What we found with deep needling, if we had the chi, the de chi sensation on the needle, that's the aching sensation, what we picked up was deactivation. Areas of the brain here, further back, um, where the, we've, we've coloured that blue. Acupuncture was having a real effect on the brain, and it was doing something completely unexpected. It was a result that surprised us all. That reinforces the idea that something quite special is happening, something unique to acupuncture, something physiological. Well, as a neuroscientist, I, I'm particularly interested in activations of the brain, but the surprising thing about this study is that we have deactivations, a decrease in neuronal activity, and that's something I think that neuroscientists have got to take into account. Well, for me, the most extraordinary thing is out of this whole study is that we've got what you might call objective evidence. We've got biological correlates of acupuncture. Something's happening in the brain when you put a needle in. Different things happen with superficial and deep and they're clearly associated with acupuncture and it's something you can actually measure and quantify. Superficial needles. But the team was even more excited to discover where it was happening. Associated with the needling, the superficial needling, also activated these deeper structures around here 
The area of the brain affected by the deep needling was an area often called the limbic system. And this part here was also activated, and what we know about these deeper structures is they're associated with our experience of pain. Or, yes, how we experience pain, how we modulate pain, and it's known as the pain matrix. That sounds really exciting. You're saying that the bit of the brain that helps us decide whether something's painful, the kind of threshold that we have for pain, we think perhaps is being affected by acupuncture and so maybe that helps to explain why acupuncture can help with chronic pain. That's one hypothesis. Certainly it's a guess and it, I would say it's quite a good guess, yeah. Wow, well, well that's quite remarkable. So, the discovery that parts of the pain matrix become less active by deep needling with de chi is astonishing. Why? Why on earth would just that de chi sensation, you know, be associated with deactivations? That we don't know. But when you tie it in with the fact that acupuncturists use de chi, does then these deactivations start to give us the, the key to how acupuncture works? That's what puts a smile on my face. It's just incredible, I think, the way that acupuncturists say what really matters in acupuncture is de chi. And then here we are, you, neuroscientist, is saying, oh, we find that this amazing thing going on in the brain that we don't really understand that well, the deactivation, the being less active than normal, that only seems to happen during de chi. And maybe that's coincidence, or maybe that's the key to something really interesting. I'm sure scientists will continue to examine acupuncture. After all, huge gaps still remain in our understanding of this ancient medicine. But for me, the results of our experiment do add weight to many of the stories I've heard in my travels. It's been quite a journey for me. I started off pretty sceptical about acupuncture. It just didn't make sense from a scientific point of view. Then I found evidence that it really does work for some kinds of pain. And then the experiment was just hugely exciting to take a step towards understanding what's going on in the brain. So it's been an astonishing time. And I believe that acupuncture still has a lot to teach us about the way our own brains and bodies work. And Cathy Sykes turns her attention to healing, same time next Tuesday on BBC Two.